All right, today I'm playing uh, the AC3R, which has been my guy for a while. And I'm going to start off a little song called Dancing with Spin Doctors. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks so much. So uh, you've probably been hearing guitar playing all day, I'm, I'm guessing. And uh, so I'm going to maybe share like a, a little exercise for you. Uh, 
because as you observed, all the new modern style guitar players are doing something a little bit different than what the old guys used to do. So in the old days, it used to be right hand was always connected with the left hand, and you did the same thing over. And so guitar players were not thinking like piano players. But the whole new young generation, the girl you've seen here before, and then all the girls, Andy McKee, all these young people, uh, they're starting to think like piano players. So that means you have to start doing two different things with two different hands. And they can build in rhythm and stuff like that. So um, who, who here plays guitar? Uh-oh, man, pressure's on. OK, well, let's put you guys to the test then. So the idea is, is when we think about music, the core of it is rhythm. And, and funk and you know that vibe. And so how do you get that? Well, you practice with the metronome and that's one way. But when you're separating the two hands, you wanna start to learn how to do that independence. So this little exercise, we're gonna use the song Day Tripper, which probably everybody knows, right? By Tommy Emanuel, heard that? He's doing two different things. So <clears throat> you can do this without a guitar. When you're driving down the road, you can pick any song you want. And the idea is, is you're gonna start with your left foot and you're gonna kind of keep a solid rhythm all the way through. So for Day Tripper, it's going to be um, da, 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 da. So everybody got that left foot going? We'll go sort of one, two, three, four. Da, 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 da. It's going to get more exciting, I promise. Bear with me. So now we're going to take the right hand while that foot just keeps going. It never stops. It keeps doing that same rhythm all the way through. And we're going to take the right hand, and we're going to tap out the melody. So three, four. OK, everybody got that? That's the easy part. So ideally, what you would do is you'd practice that, and then you'd do it the opposite side, right? And so what's the purpose of this? It's like when you're running for a marathon, you have to train. So doing these rhythmic, rhythmic exercises just makes your body more funky, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. So the next, the next part of this exercise, once you've got down, is now you're going to take it to two hands. And this gets a little bit harder. So uh, I haven't done this in a while, so let's see what happens. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to count eight more. Then I'm going to bring this hand in, and we're going to tap out the melody with the right hand, OK? So one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Anybody get that? Get okay. So we got piano players in the house. Okay, so here's where we're going to throw the piano players off and the drummers. So once you get the two hand thing down, you go the opposite side. So now, here's when smoke starts coming out of your ears. Uh, and maybe some of you can do this, maybe some can, I don't know. So the, the idea is, is that by doing the two different rhythms, you've now proved that you can do two different things with hands, right? So that opens up possibilities. But what if now you could take the thumb and make that independent of the hand? So let's look at the, 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 the exercise leading up to that would be, I'm going to take three fingers, and now I'm going to tap out that eighth note, right? So one, two, and on and on. And I'm going to count four, and I'm going to bring the index finger in, and that's going to play the melody, okay? So one, hopefully I can do this, three, four. Okay, so what does that do? Really nothing, but it leads up to the next exercise, which is the hard one. So, and by doing this next thing, what I'm proving is you can do something here, something here, and then run a bass line with the thumb, right? So now, <clears throat> we'll see who's gonna get a prize here. So I'm gonna go count four, and then I'm gonna do the melody with the thumb, okay? So one, two, three, four. Bum, da, 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 Anybody? Yamaha had a thousand dollar check for you guys today. I, Sorry, no winners. Uh, I guess next year practice. No, just kidding. So that's just kind of an idea of what's going on with uh, that, this kind of a style. So perhaps I'm going to play something. Let's see. Uh... One of the other reasons I chose the Yamaha is that they, they have a really strong reinforced neck. And so what that means to me as a player is I can get the action down really low. 
Uh, being an old guy, I don't want to get injured playing guitar these days, so having a nice low action is really, really helpful. And then when you're touring through all these different weather conditions, the guitar seems to hold the stability, which is really, really cool. Thank you. Thanks so much. So uh, any questions at all? No? Now one of the things you notice I'm quite doing a lot is, uh, is neck bending. And once again, because you have a really stable neck with this particular guitar, it makes it, uh, makes it a lot of fun to be able to do with this kind of vibrato fix. So I played something sleepy. How are we doing for time? Anybody got the time? No time, okay. Let's play something to wake you up then. Now you noticed I'm using a standard little guitar and I just dropped way down low and it's still holding a lot of tension, which is another great, uh, you know, unique feature about this. If you were a, a, a person in zombie apocalyptic times and you wanted to get to your next gig, you'd have to have the ultimate guitar weapon, right? So this song's about that. It's about having a blade up here to chop zombies in this direction, blade down here to chop zombies in that direction, chainsaw, because I'm a Canadian boy. Uh, of course, my nails would be adamantium to carve initials on zombies' foreheads. But if all else failed, I'd have a whammy bar operated flamethrower. And so uh, we came up with the title called Armed and Dangerous which is not good to travel into the United States with that title, so. Thank you. 
Thank you. Any questions? Come on, you guys. Let me show you the different sounds. Uh, so right now, I'm going to take off the magnetic. And here's my Yamaha sound. So that's the natural sound of the pickup, which is a great sounding pickup, and you get lots of options in there. But what it doesn't have for me is the, uh, the microphone. So this guy allows me to dial in a bit of different color. I'll take the Yamaha out. So now I get that, which is kind of too magnetic-y, but the beauty is I got a little dial here for the microphone. So I can bring this in. And what the advantage of that for me is, uh, is I play a lot of like rowdy bar kind of stages. So you get feedback very easy for microphones. This allows me to kind of contour on big stages if I start feeding back. 
when you have the contact pickup systems and they start feeding back, you kind of don't have any control. There's no volume, right? So that's uh, more and more of these pickup systems are, are starting to emerge in the market. That's it. Yeah, so easy. Dial in, dial out. When I don't want it, I just take it totally out, like right now. Because it's kind of sizzly, right? But when you blend the two together, you get this really fat, kind of gorgeous sound, right? And this is from a sub $2,000 guitar. What, what are these guitars selling for in Germany? This is the AC3R. Yeah, this is like, I, that's why I play them for many, many years, right? I started off with the LL series back in the old day, uh, the big guitar. And then I moved down to a smaller guitar because when you play acoustically, it doesn't have the volume and the bass that a bigger guitar was. But when you turn it up on stage for the volume, you don't have all the bass problems. So this is really a nice little, uh, you see Tommy Manuel, he also plays a small guitar. It plays very loud, so. Any more questions? Or? Thank you. So I'm going to do a song. Um, Probably only have time for one more, I'm thinking. Um, but uh, like I said, you guys have been listening to guitar all day. You've been hearing all sorts of music all day. Now it's your turn to sing along if you want. So I'm going to say the word calling, and you're going to repeat that back because you're a live, energetic crowd at a rock show. The Summit, Guitar Summit. That's an amazing thing, right? You only get that once a year. <laughs> You'll know when the part comes. I 
Half time scores the same Don't fret, it's just a game You realize it's always there The answers to your prayers Here we go I heard that you were calling I heard that you were calling Get one more chance Calling me over there Here we go I heard that you were calling I heard that you were calling Calling me over there Over there Okay, not bad, but you can be better You stay home to work things out You find only fear and doubt A shadow casts your way No time left to play Here we go I heard that you were calling Oh, I heard that you were calling Calling over there. Okay, we'll be a loud one this time. I heard that you were calling. I heard that you were calling. Over there. I heard you calling You know I heard you calling Calling over there You know I heard you calling You know I heard you calling Calling over I Calling over I Calling over there yeah. Jump over